So hi, my name is Monica Estrella. I'm a student at the University of Connecticut. And today I'll be talking to you a little bit about my research called the perceived moral patiency of social robots, differences across morphologies. So today I'll be talking about the objectives of my project, as well as the methodology, result analysis, conclusions, and some implications for future research. So for the objective number one is to find correlations between participants' preferred terminology or the words that participants use with the most frequency and their perception of social robots' moral patiency. And then for objective number two is to explore human social constructs and characteristics and how we may apply them to non-living things. And now for the methodology. So for my data collection, I use data that was previously collected by Dr. Jamie Banks. And in her original study, participants were shown introductory videos of one of three kinds of social robots. So they had the human, the spider, and the mechanical robot. And then for all of the social robots, they were all called Ray. And they were then asked to write scenarios in which the robots were treated morally or immorally. And for my methodological approach, I analyzed the frequency of relevant words used within each um, moral scenario and within each condition, and then I analyze the most common themes present in those descriptions. And then for the analysis method, I ran LDA topic modeling for each set of data using Python. I found the words with the highest frequency within each condition, and then I created a word cloud for each condition and made sure to remove any like irrelevant words, such as like pronouns and other words, and then I analyzed the context in which the most common words were used. And then finally, I looked for like overall themes or topics and interpreted the differences between each condition. And then finally, for my interpretation, I analyzed whether participants preferred terminology reflected previous mental concepts or heuristics that they have about technology and social robots. So here is the stimulus that was used in the original study. So here we have the humanoid robot, here we have the mechanical, and here is the spider robot. So here we can see the words that had the highest frequency within the mechanical condition. So certain words such as knock were used like in immoral situations a lot. And they referred to harming Ray by like knocking it over. And then laugh was usually used in like immoral scenarios. And people use it often to depict people making fun of Ray. And then the word damage and damaging was used in both like moral and immoral contexts. And it was used in the context of people preventing Ray from getting harmed or people purposely harming Ray. Then for the spider condition, these were the words with the highest frequency. Um, so the word box was used in the context of treating Ray immorally by putting it in a box to restrict it of its freedom. The word run was used like also in an immoral context of running Ray over to harm it. And then words such as bring and brought were used to describe both moral and immoral situations. So some people use these words in the context of like bringing Ray places to like keep it safe, but in other cases, people use it in the context of bringing Ray places to harm it. And then finally, for the human condition, these are the words that were most frequently used within this condition. And something that I found interesting is that the word become was used often to like depict Ray um, becoming characteristics that are usually attributed to humans. So for example, some people described Ray becoming depressed or becoming defensive or becoming sad. And most of these attributes that people used were negative. 
And then for the words information and inform, they were mostly used like in context in which Ray was giving like false information. And in these scenarios, people had the purpose of making Ray malfunction or to just like simply make it look bad. And then finally, the word problem was used in a positive context, such as when people would help Ray to like solve like an inconvenience, such as whenever it got lost. And now some conclusions and some implications for future research. So in the mechanical condition, a lot of the scenarios reflected the heuristic that a lot of people have that technology like will eventually like replace people in the workplace, that technology is gonna um, take over jobs. And so many of the scenarios reflected how humans felt like threatened by a ray. So they would try to look for ways to like make it look inferior. So I believe that future research could definitely look, look into methods to integrate this kind of technology in workplaces in ways that people can see it as an aid rather than as a threat. And for the spider condition, a lot of the scenarios reflected how people wanted to exert their dominance over Ray. Um, so one thing that I noticed about this condition is that people, people would, oh, sorry. People would typically use the most aggressive terms when compared to other kinds of terminology. And for future research, it should look at strategies to prevent humans from being like physically aggressive against robots and trying to destroy them. So maybe this research could look into how changing the robot's appearance could make it so that humans are less likely to harm it. And then finally, for the humanoid condition, humans imagined when humans when people were asked to create scenarios in which Ray was treated immorally, they usually depicted people giving Ray the wrong information to make him malfunction instead of using like very physically aggressive terms, such as the ones used in the spider condition. And then one possible explanation for this is that people may feel like more empathy toward the humanoid robot because it like most closely resembles them. And then for future research, could look into how more realistic humanoid robots could garner more like empathy from humans. And before I finish, I would like to give special thanks to Dr. Jamie Banks for me, my mentor throughout this research process and for her huge contribution to this project. And I would also like to thank Dr. Jeffrey Stanton, Dr. Jasmina Tushiba, and Dr. Jeff Hemsley.